I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. This Stunner is a Fisher from 1895 that we've um, done a, a significant amount of work to it and, uh, and restored it in many respects, not all respects, um, I'll get into that, but uh, in many, many respects what, what uh, um, I think are, are some, some very important parts of the piano that we, that we redid and now it's um, now it's just sounding amazing. Let's give you just a quick taste. I'll play it again a little bit later. You can just hear that's what these pianos were born to do, to sound just big and powerful. And it just, I mean, like, I'm sure you're not getting it as a video watcher, but here, standing right here, like, I feel it in my chest. It just, like, um, which is what I like. I like a very powerful piano like that. And there is no piano that is manufactured post-1930, no upright piano, I should say, that, that, that has the capacity to, to boom like, like this one. Um, so that's, that's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons that, that, that we like to, to rebuild these old classics. Um, okay, so 1895, that goes way back. Um, what is that, 125 years? And uh, of course the craftsmanship on, on these old pianos is, is um, very, very high. I read once that pianos in this era, they, they sold in today's dollars when adjusted for inflation, but for between 30 and $50,000. Of course they were selling for you know, 500 or $700 or whatever it was, um, but, but adjusted for inflation. So, so the average income at the time might have been you know, about five or seven hundred dollars, and um, and actually, pianos are where pe people think of financing as something that was kind of introduced in the automotive industry. But of course, pianos way predate cars, um, and uh, pianos were actually the first thing that uh, that that I guess people were were um, in massive consumer debt for. So, uh, the, but the point being, for thirty or thirty to fifty thousand dollars, you can imagine what what kind of craftsmanship that could buy. Um, that can buy some some pretty um, high skilled craftsmen for a lot of time, which is why you end up with products like this. And and I feel like it's it's a shame. It's a um, uh, well, it's shameful to just throw away pianos like this, which, which frankly, before, before we got a hold of it, as, as simply just, a, uh, just a, a, an item, it, 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 doesn't, it didn't really serve its purpose anymore because it was 125 years old. Um, but after we've gone through it and restored it to this condition, um, it's ready for another several decades of, of great use. Um, and so it feels really good. Okay. So uh, I'll talk about the exterior, then I'll talk about the interior. So, so exterior, of course, we've done a full, full refinishing on it, and um, it's just beautiful. The, the wood and the, the carving and the, um, the color and the sheen, everything is the texture, just really soft and smooth, really beautifully done here at the shop. Then we have a replica decal of what was there originally. Of course, when we refinish this portion, that old decal comes off entirely. So we put on a replica. And then we have things like the lock here and that little keyhole thing. And these hinges here and the pedals, of course. The pedals, these are original pedals. These are 1895 and you can see um, it says Fisher across the top. That's just a piece of trim. And uh, so, as gorgeous as, as those are, I mean, it looks like it's brand new, but it isn't. That, that these are all, all one, two, three, four separate pieces of, of custom metal um, manufactured 125 years ago that have now been replated, and, uh, and they're beautiful. Of course, we have new casters under here, so this piano rolls around very well if you ever have, if you have experience pushing pianos even just around the room, you know that these old pianos do not roll well um, until they have new casters on, and that's, that's the issue. They probably rolled well originally, but um, those casters are just shot after a few decades. 
So with new casters now, this can actually roll around um, a room quite easily. Um, okay, then the uh, then keys. The keys have been replaced. The sharps have been replaced. Again, that's um, I think that's very important since since the keys are kind of the, the interface of the for the pianist. And then and then what we've done. It, I'm, I'm always faced with a with kind of a, a dilemma because I want to, on the one hand, keep keep the price of these pianos as reasonable as possible, but on the other hand. Um, you know, if, if I could be totally indulgent, um, I would replace absolutely everything, but then of course um, the price would have to be commensurate with, with that level of work. So uh, this, is, this is a perfect example of, of a piano that, uh, that I made decisions um, that, that I feel very comfortable with on, on the inside. So, so you can see, like, the hammers are totally brand new. Um, because no, I mean, they're made of felt, and so, so no hammers can last 125 years. So that absolutely had to be, to be replaced. These are the dampers, these things that, that rest against the strings there. I determined that those actually function quite well, even though they're the original dampers. And so I made the decision again to, in order to keep the cost as low as possible, that we could leave those dampers there. Um, all of the hammer butts, which is what the what the hammers pivot on, all of those hammer butts have been refurbished. So, so the pinning, every all of those hammer butts, they pivot on a pin. There's a metal pin that goes through there, and they pivot back and forth. Over time, there's space and kind of wobble that develops, and as it as the pinning sort of deteriorates. So we've gone through rather than replace them, which is fairly expensive, we've we've refurbished them. So new leather and new pinning. So that so that it's back to you know nice just back and forth, the the correct amount of friction. Um, bridle straps, those are replaced. Bushings have been replaced. Lots of felt and leather throughout has been replaced. And let's look down here. At down here, this is referred to as the trap work. You can see the trap work is all totally rebuilt. Um, the original components, but everything is just cleaned up. So, um, you know, sanding this down, not that it really matters, but it just kind of looks nice. Um, just kind of return it to its original 1895 condition with with um, felt and bushings for these pedals to, um, to pivot on so that it's nice and firm and there's not any wobble there. Like it's, it's really firm and, and tight, all, all three of those pedals you'll notice on pianos this age, those pedals will, will f be kind of floppy. They'll wobble back and forth. Um, and then the same with the functioning of these, of these big long levers. There'll be a lot of play in, in those and they'll just be noisy and, and sometimes if it's bad enough, they'll be non-functional altogether. So, um, so you, can, you can see what I'm talking about, that I, I make choices based on trying to keep, keep things priced as reasonably as I can um, while still restoring it to uh, its former glory. I'm, I'm always faced with that sort, of, that, that sort of balance and I feel really confident, really comfortable with, with where, we, where we're at um, on this piano. I, I feel like the, the components that have been replaced are, were the right ones to replace because they were just too far gone. Whereas the, the, the components that we didn't replace, that are still original, um, they actually have many decades of great use left in them. So, the only thing left to do now is just to, just to play it.
really nice, big, powerful tone. Very proud of this piano. Come check it out. The address here is 1497 South State Street in Orem. Thanks for watching.